Let's talk about the end of Moore's Law. One of the best ways to describe what's happening is to follow along with what Dr. David Patterson is doing at UC Berkeley. He's an architect as well for the TPU, which is a TensorFlow processing unit. And what he says is that the end of growth of single program speed really occurred you know, right around this period of the last 40 years, right? So at first in the 1980s, there was this 22% increase uh, once the risk processor was around, we got a 52% increase. Then things started to slow down a little bit. And you can see here right around, let's say 2003, there's a 23% um, growth rate because multi-core machines come in and they're not as efficient at, at scaling things, right? Because you're gonna lose efficiency due to Omdel's law. And here we see Omdel's law, which effectively says the parallel portion of your code has diminishing returns. Finally, you get to current, which is about a 3% increase. So there's some big problems, but it creates opportunities. So one of the ways that people are taking advantage of this uh, dead end is to look at ASICs, and these stand for Application Specific Integrated Circuits. And a good example of an ASIC is something that many people already have on their machine, is a GPU, and specifically things like a NVIDIA GPU. There's been a whole toolkit uh, designed around it to do parallel coding. And that toolkit is called CUDA. There's other vendors that are starting to jump in and get involved and compete with uh, the CUDA infrastructure like AMD. Also, there's new players like TPUs, which are actually even going beyond what a GPU does and specifically uh, generating workloads uh, that work with, let's say, the TensorFlow uh, machine learning framework. So here's an example of a TPU in production from for Google started in 2015. They use it for search, for translation, for photos. You can see a whole rack here. Now, what's the difference? Well, a CPU is really designed to do a, a lot of different things. So it's a general purpose uh, processing unit. Now, if you look at a GPU though, it's been specifically designed to do things in parallel. Really, and that's the big difference between a CPU and a GPU is a GPU is designed to be parallel, where a CPU is really designed to do lots of different things uh, and execute different things on a computer. Now, if we look at a TPU, one of the things that's interesting is a TPU uh, is even more dense than a GPU, and you can see that a TPU is actually doesn't even care about doing uh, only parallelization. It's focused on parallelization for a specific workload. So really this is one of the advantages of these ASICs is that you, as a, maybe a software vendor, you could control the whole stack and you could actually design something that uh, works with the software you have, the cloud you have, and also the processor you have. So uh, let's get into some, some, some facts here and actually play around with a, a real example. To use a, a GPU or a just-in-time compiler, you can use a library called Numba. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that uh, is. It's a, a way of programming a, a GPU or just-in-time compiler, lots of different uh, techniques you can use with Numba, and you can see all the different examples of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Colab Notebook. I'm gonna use Colab Pro, and I'm gonna uh, turn on a GPU hardware accelerator and a couple things to point out here is that you'll want to just double check after you install Numba that the um, .so output uh, appears here. So you could recreate exactly what I'm doing without using Numba. But in this example, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up this Colab notebook and get started. Okay, so I've got this checked in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link, Open in Colab. And a couple things that I'll do here is first step, I'll check the runtime. This is really important. You also see I'm using the pro version, so I get a, a fancier GPU. Uh, let's go ahead and select that. Okay, great, that's good. Runtime standard. Hey, why don't we make it high RAM as well? Okay, now that this is set up, uh, I can just uh, click connect and it'll establish a connection to a NVIDIA GPU that I have access to. And you can see here, I also have um, something like uh, 25 gigs of RAM. So first up, I'll install Numba, and then I'll double check here that the this uh, SO driver is is available for me. Uh, and this will be uh, really the, the shared library that I'll need to do CUDA coding later. And CUDA coding really is a way of doing GPU programming for NVIDIA. So we'll give this a second here. It's uh, installing Numba. And then uh, looks like Numbo is actually already installed on this machine. And then I also 
in verifying that I do have two versions of CUDA. I have version 10.0 and I also have version 10.1. So uh, this will take just a second here. Uh, the next thing that I'll do is I'll just import some libraries. So I'll import NumPy, I'll, I'll use some sp specific imports like the just-in-time compiler, the CUDA library, um, some data types here. Uh, and once I do that, the first thing that I'll play around with is a Mandelbrot. And a Mandelbrot is really a visualization that that uh, is very taxing uh, to compute. And so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do it on the CPU. So if I go through here and I say um, some Mandelbrot code here, uh, I then go through and I create a fractal. Let's go through, go ahead and run that. And then let's go ahead and, and create it. Now, when we run this, you, you can see it takes a, quite a while, right? It's gonna take a, a few seconds. In fact, it takes 4.337 seconds to calculate this really fancy image. Uh, so that's why a lot of people use this as a benchmarking tool. So, so next up, can we do better than that? Well, yes, we're, let's go ahead and use the Numba version, which is a, uh, a version that uses a just-in-time compiler. So what this does is it takes our Python code and it turns it into machine code. So it's, it can potentially run you know, uh, much, much faster because it's gonna go directly to uh, instruction for a CPU. So let's go through here and run the just-in-time compiler. I'll put a uh, at JIT there. Next up, um, I'll go through here and I'll run this version. And you can see here, it's inst almost instantaneous, right? It's it's basically 39, um, 0.39 seconds to actually generate this version. Okay, can we also try this, the GPU out? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's use the CUDA GPU here. And what I'll do is I'll say CUDA.JIT, and I uh, tee this up here. And then uh, what I do is I say at CUDA.JIT, and I put in these different data types here. Uh, and this just it allows me to use these data types on the GPU. And now I go ahead and I run this version. And in fact, look how much faster this is. You can see that it's 0 0.05 seconds where the, the machine level code, even at the you know, assembly level of, of the CPU, it's actually much, much faster. So really a, a GPU is a great way to, to uh, speed up code that is highly parallelizable. So, what else can we do? Well, you also can just directly get into the CUDA library and start playing around with code. Now, to do this, you have to take your 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 code and move it specifically into the GPU, vectorize it, so turn it into a form where it can be highly parallel, and then run the code. So here's an example that's kind of contrived, but uh, what I do is I take a data frame in, in Pandas here, and then I convert it to a form that the um, number library can, can utilize, and then I return it as an array, and then I vectorize it right here. So this allows it to run on the GPU, and then what I do is I take those arrays and I copy those to the GPU. Uh, that's, that's really one of the things that you have to specifically do when you do GPU programming, is make sure you copy from uh, your, your, your current memory to the GPU mem memory, then, I go through and I do the calculation on the GPU. So if it's something that would take, let's say four days, this is where you would really take advantage, but there's a cost to, to moving that calculation to the GPU. Next up, you can see that I went, went through and I ran a, a vectorized function on a GPU. So tons of different uh, fun things you can do with CUDA and with uh, a GPU. Uh, and fortunately with something like Colab Pro, you have a, effectively a supercomputer right at your fingertips.